Welcome to this week's Q&A. We've got a, a question from a viewer um, in Dubai, an Australian expat, and it relates to superannuation guarantee contributions from an employer. Um, so he's asking, <clears throat> look, when I was employed back in Oz, uh, my com employer was obliged to make superannuation uh, contributions on my behalf of 9.5% per annum. Um, now, a couple of things first of all, if you're employed by a, an overseas employer and you're an Australian, um, it's more than likely than not that that employer has no obligation to make superannuation guarantee payments uh, on your behalf. Um, the other thing of course to note is there are always changes, so from 1 July this year the superannuation guarantee rate actually increased 10% per annum. And Another little nuance is that that's based on a quarterly maximum amount of earnings, which if multiplied by four, comes to $235,680 per year. So the maximum that an employee in Australia would now be obliged to contribute on your behalf would be $23,658 per annum. But it's a little, perhaps even more complex than that because it's based on a quarterly amount. So employers need to make that contribution uh, at least on a quarterly basis. And that's actually based on $58,920 per quarter. So if you were $60,000 one quarter and $70,000 the next quarter, the employer would still only have to make the 10% contributions based on that maximum uh, quarterly amount of, of $58,920. So that to one side, because that's the Australian situation, if you're an Australian expat, uh, so you're a non-resident for tax purposes, um, yes, you, you could effectively make uh, the equivalent of those employer contributions. They're not uh, superannuation guarantee contributions because they're not made by your employer. They would be personal deductible contributions you could make to your public offer um, superannuation fund that you might have left behind or, or had prior years in Australia. So then you've got to actually be aware of the current concessional contribution caps that are in place and they've just been increased to 27500 per annum. Um, so you could contribute on your own behalf up to $27,500 on a tax deductible basis on Australian tax per annum. However, it depends on the tax jurisdiction that you're in as to perhaps deciding whether you would do that or not, or should do that. So if you look at this person's situation in Dubai where it's a very low tax environment, um, you know, a superannuation fund contributions are taxed at 15% in Australia. So um, that may or may not be, from a tax viewpoint, the most efficient outcome. But let's say that person had an investment property or an ex-home in Australia and that was producing positive income, Australian taxable income, which is rental income. And then they were paying 32.5 cents in a dollar, 32.5% on that income from dollar one. So if you look at things on that basis, then perhaps the tax deduction um, created by a superannuation contribution that is tax deductible would be very tax effective to remove that 32.5% tax impost and give you a substantial lowering um, to say 15%. So it really depends as always on someone's personal situation. I urge everyone to get personal advice in relation to this, but very important then if you're living in say the US or the UK or Hong Kong or Singapore or the UAE, um, and it really is also very dependent on some of the other macro things that you've got to think about. So if perhaps, you know, if you intend to be offshore forever, um, then an Australian super fund may be of somewhat less benefit, but also not. So you've got to look at the longer term outcomes because pension earnings certainly at this stage and, and pension income is tax free. So you've got to look at how that's going to look after your retirement nesting. Um, you know, should you 
Should you be contributing some money to your superannuation fund while you're offshore? And certainly for a lot of our clients that have investment properties, it's something that we need to look at for them on an ongoing basis to make sure that they're being as efficient as possible with their finances, because after all, that's what's going to give them the best outcome in the long term. If you found this interesting and like some more information, um, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and click like. I'm Andrew Untervega from Wise Guru, and I'll see you next week for our Q&A. All the best to all the Aussie expats around the world and all of our clients back home in Australia.